Okay, welcome, Juan. It's great to, great to see you. Great to be here. So we're going to do this in English so uh, we can get a, an audience that can, that can hear how we're doing here in the, in the ecosystem in, in Colombia. So um, I want to start off, uh, well, you're, I'll, I'll give a little introduction. You're uh, the CEO and co-founder of Tapsi, which is the, the leading uh, taxi hailing company here in, in Colombia. And, uh, but we're going to start off with, with how you started out, how you came into the world. So where were you born? You know, what was your upbringing? What, what did your parents do? Things like that. Okay, well, um, I, was, uh, I was born in, in a small city called Neiva. In, uh, it's about uh, five hours south of Bogota. Um, my parents um, came, to, or came, came to Bogota to, to live after maybe when I was uh, three years old. Um, so I was basically raised uh, in, in, in Bogota. Um, then uh, I joined uh, a school um, that was very, uh, very forward in terms of, of, of the use of, of technology and uh, trying to uh, exploit, or to not, maybe not exploit, but to, to take advantage of, of the um, uh, uh, children uh, abilities. So uh, I started to uh, program when I was 10, when I was 10 years old. Um, basically it was part of, uh, for passion, because it, it was something that I really enjoyed. To, to learn a lot about uh, coding and uh, getting things done like very easily through through code. How many of your ten year old friends like the code? None. <laughs> <laughs> None. Yeah, I was I was the only nerd that uh, I had I had a small bike, a motorbike um, that uh, my friends and and I like to to ride sometimes and. Uh, my friends made fun of me because I rather stay uh, at home coding with a new computer that my dad gave me uh, instead of, of going around with a, with a motorbike. So you were saying a little bit about that. So what was it that you, you just loved about doing that? What was it that, uh, that really got your juices flowing? Yeah, I think uh, it basically was um, like getting an idea and trying to, to solve the problem easily through, through code. Um, like um, being able to to see different things uh, come alive um, using using uh, basic uh, uh, keywords in the in the in the in the so in the coding software. So that's probably some of the uh, amazing things that when a programmer starts uh, learning about coding, uh, realizes that uh, that uh, when he sees something working after. Uh, the person um, tries or, or, or uh, starts working with it, uh, and when he or she sees the results and, and it works, then I think it's, it's, it's very um, enriching for, for the person. And what, what did you program in? Just the, first, the first language was basic. Okay. And your parents, were they entrepreneurial? Or? Yeah, both of my parents uh, are entrepreneurs. Uh, both of them had uh, separate companies. So I kind of grew within that um, environment of, of hard work and uh, uh, doing uh, the most out of themselves or, or doing the most out of, uh, of uh, what was available to, to, to grow in terms of uh, uh, building a business and doing stuff for the business and getting uh, uh, people or um, the, the company uh, growing. And uh, what was your first entrepreneurial uh, endeavor? Like, what, what did you do first? Yeah, my first entrepreneurial endeavor was probably when I was at high school. Um, I, well, I learned like the, the basic language when I was uh, in, in, the, in the first school, in, in, in um, primary school. And then um, I started getting more involved on, on, on learning how to program. So I started reading books. Uh, at that moment, there was no internet, so I asked my dad for, for books. Um, uh, he got me a couple of computers so I could uh, also work on, on them and start trying a different couple, things. A couple of computers? Yeah, well, <laughs> it, 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 was, it, it, came, it started evolving, so I had to upgrade the computer many times. And um, I started learning and uh, reading books so, so I could learn myself because at that moment computers were really new in, 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 in Colombia and basically in the world so 
uh, there was not much more or, or, or people to, to learn from. So um, that was um, when, I, when I started um, programming. Um, then I learned new languages. And uh, those new languages helped me to evolve on, on, on resolving different problems, bigger problems. And uh, some friends of my parents who also had companies started to um, ask me to do software for them. So I started programming software for um, insurance companies to, to get to um, take take control of the, um, of the uh, accounts that they had in terms of, of, of the commercial But you were much uh, older, right? you were at least 12. Yeah, I know, I was around 15, okay. probably okay. I was 15 years old. And uh, also a software for, I built a software for um, uh, an accounting system and uh, invoicing system and uh, a software for uh, maintaining the records of a library. And what did you do so, with money that you made? Um, I basically bought new new computers, new stuff. I upgraded my, my computers, uh, uh, bought some new books. Um, and uh, by then, no, actually, uh, I started getting on the internet when I was uh, at the university. So okay. I, then I started learning some, some other uh, languages. I joined the university with the plan of studying um, electrical engineering and um, computer science or systems engineering as it's called in, here in Colombia. And uh, uh, in the middle of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, of the uh, university, I started to think that I was getting too technical on, 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 on what I really wanted to do. I really wanted to, to build a company or do something else. So I thought maybe I should start uh, getting some entrepreneurial um, um, or more or get something more from school in terms of uh, business. And uh, that's when I decided to move to uh, industrial engineering, which in Colombia has a very uh, business administration um, focus. So I started to, to I, I switched my career and I finally graduated from, from industrial engineering. So at that age, you already knew you wanted to create a company. You wanted to, to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I think I, I kind of, of uh, after many trials uh, and after many um, things that I went through my life, I, th I thought that maybe it was, it was something that I really wanted to do. Okay, so you graduate from, from college and then what, what, did you, what did you do? When I graduated from college, um, I joined um, IESEC, which is uh, an student association that helps students to find uh, jobs or internships abroad. And uh, I found an internship an internship in uh, in Canada, in Vancouver, um, in which they hired me to work for for a project for around eight months, and then after those eight months, um, I um, I got another job offer and I stayed uh, for over five years. Dead. And how how did that experience in Canada impact you? Well, I think the, probably the most uh, enriching um, experience that I had that there was the, um, the uh, exposure to different cultures. Vancouver is, is a very um, um, diverse city in which you meet people from Asia, from Europe, from North America, obviously. And um, I was able to to have experience with many, many different kind of, of, of people and uh, uh, probably that, that helped me also to, to see life in, from, from different points of view or learn uh, how people see life uh, and the world from different parts of view. And okay, wh why didn't you stay living there? Why did you come back? Because actually that was, that was another, another uh, entrepreneurial uh, or another startup that I had there in, the, in my last year in Canada. I started a, a company that did software for um, real estate uh, companies. And um, at that moment, the, the lean startup uh, um, philosophy wasn't, wasn't, uh, uh, it wasn't real yet. So I spent uh, one year working on the software, on the product. And when we 
came out to, to, to sell it, it didn't sell as well as we expected. So I ran out of money and I had to, to come back to, to Colombia. That didn't work out that well. And then when you came back, uh, you worked at a at telecom. At a, was, that, was, that the, was that still government owned back then? Or? Yeah, it actually was at the moment in which um, the company uh, was moving from, uh, from being public to being uh, part public and yeah. part private. Um, so there I was working. Um, in part of, uh, of uh, or doing uh, new product development for, for the area in which, in which uh, I, was, um, I was working. And um, basically what, what, what I did that was try to find out new products or new ways to, to help customers from, from the, from the uh, phone carrier. Okay, and how did you jump from there to, to voice one, two, three? Yeah, uh, after... After, Which is being, a there, yeah, after yeah. being there for, for a while, um, I went to Spain to do um, a master's degree in, in business administration. Uh, and then when I came back, uh, I met, uh, I met uh, Alex Torrenegra, which is, uh, who is, uh, is uh, in a, another entrepreneur and famous here in Colombia. And uh, he proposed to me to, to partner with him to uh, develop a new um, marketplace for uh, actors and uh, models. Uh, we started working on it, um, and about six months uh, after after it, we launched it. But it didn't work out th that well. What, what was your role there? What would you do I at, was, uh, at the yeah, I was a business developer uh, slash CEO. I was in charge of the whole product. Mm -hmm. um, so after. After we launched it, we found out that models and uh, actors need to audition live for, for, their, for their director. So, so that's why it, we, we felt that it didn't work out. And then that's why um, I started working with, um, with Voice123, first in doing marketing, um, and then um, I replaced Alex uh, as CEO when, when he uh, it started a new, a new, um, a new company that. This was, was a total startup, <clears throat> Voice One Two Three, total startup, and uh, and what was like the tra trajectory of Voice One Two Three from when you started to, to, to when you left? Yeah, we grew really, really fast. Um, uh, Voice One Two Three came from being uh, a company in which um, the um, the voice actors had one way of working and we introduced a new way of a, a new way of uh, finding customers and dealing with them so um, that allowed us to introduce a new algorithm that helped the uh, the uh, the matching of the jobs that uh, became in, or that came to into the uh, into the marketplace and how they came to the um, to the voice actors um, we reached um, uh, the goals and big numbers when, uh, when uh, during that time, and that's when um, I, I, I took some some time off to start a, a, a new company. Um, at that moment, we th we saw that um, um, search engine optimization and uh, online marketing was growing really fast. We we were. Uh, a company that, that had all the people here in, in Colombia, but uh, served the, the market in, in, in the US and, and Canada and actually uh, the world. So I learned a lot about online marketing and I wanted to help other companies in Colombia to take advantage of online marketing, which was a pretty, um, or basically almost uh, nil here in, in, in Colombia. Um, so I started creating a new company that helped or th that th did some um, consulting and uh, delivered some cons uh, services for online marketing. Okay, so you had a chance to run somebody else's startup. How important was that like to what you did later, later on? That experience. Well, I think uh, it's it's very valuable because uh, I had the chance, obviously, to to learn from from Alex, who is who is a very experienced entrepreneur. Um, but being able of the startup is also uh, something that helps you 
to get involved in different aspects of, of the startup, of the company, uh, in terms of uh, product development, business development, marketing, uh, software, um, customer service, etc. In which you have to learn a lot about, about all those parts of a company that help uh, the company succeed. So um, basically when you are exposed to, to, to so many um, things in which a company needs to, to invest time and money to, 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 to grow. Um, well, it's, it's, it's something that, that most likely you will use sometime later if, if you also are thinking of, of starting new companies. Okay, but I want to take a pause here and, um, and, and, and talk about screw-ups. So you already talked about one where you were like, you, you were like in a basement for a year. You didn't say that, but uh, I'm saying you were in a basement for a year, coding and coding, coding, and then you launch it. And nobody wants it. But what other like screw up or, or mistake did you learn a lot from? Well, maybe it was uh, recently when when we started Tapsi. Um, we thought at the beginning that um, what we were doing was was the evolution of the radio frequencies or the or the dispatch systems that that existed before. So we thought and we approached many uh, dispatch companies that, uh, that were uh, serving the, 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 the service at that moment or, or offering that service at the moment. And we thought this is the perfect system or the perfect solution for them. Uh, and uh, luckily they didn't pay much attention to us. <laughs> so we, we thought, okay, we're, our hands are tied. We were already starting development of the software. We had a prototype and these guys were not paying attention to us. So we said, okay, we have to do something. Let's find some cab drivers, uh, buy some uh, phones or tablets to, to, to install the software to them and start testing it. So that's when we started, okay, forget about the, 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 the companies. And um, uh, it was, it's, so it was actually a, a, a screw up that, that helped a lot uh, uh, in terms of growing our company without depending of, of a dispatch company. Okay, I didn't mean that question to, to fast forward to, to Tapsy yet, but, but, uh, but okay. let's go back. And uh, so after you, you left Voice123, you tried to create another company, right? And then uh, Com Converti Media? Yeah, that was the, the online marketing consulting company. How did that go? Uh, that I think it was it was maybe ahead of, of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, very few companies in Colombia were thinking about the internet, and uh, the maximum thing that they had was a website. Mm -hmm. So they didn't think forward in terms of um, how to capture or how to take advantage of the internet and doing online marketing. So that didn't work out well, and we ended up. Uh, doing mainly websites for the company and that's it. They didn't allow us to invest in uh, SEM or SEO. And then you went to a, a company and got a real job. Why'd you do that? Why'd you get a real job? Because I ran out of money again. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I had, to, I had to, to, to get it, to, to find a job again to, um, well, to be able to, to survive. And um, uh, basically I joined the corporate, the corporate world again. Uh, but it gave me again the opportunity to to see a different perspective now from a from a big corporation on uh, on how uh, they see different the, the the differences in terms of the market of the people uh, of the needs uh, in, in in a society. So um, I was there for for almost a year, and I was in charge of uh, a specific product in, in the company that was also um, close due to legal issues. Uh, and that's when I left the company and uh, I started looking for, for other opportunities. And can I talk about Tapsi you now? Yeah, but, but let me, let me say something. When was the, the digital agency? In Actually, uh, Converti Media, it was about uh, 2007. Yeah, so, um, so let, let me chime in now. So uh, this is when I saw you again. So I, I met you at, at Voice123. Yes. And, um, and then we were at an event and you said, hey, Alan, I, I created this uh, amazing app and it's to, to get taxis. And I just said, oh, okay, that's, that sounds good. And uh, if you want, I'll install it in your phone. And uh, which I thought was great. Like you actually would, you know, that, uh, Paul Graham says a lot about uh, doing stuff that doesn't scale. And uh, I said, no, no, that's okay, Juan. You don't have to install it in my phone. Then uh, like a month later, 
we saw each other in another event. And then uh, you said, oh, I already have like a thousand downloads. And I said, wow, that's good. good. If you want, I'll install it in your phone, Alan. And uh, I said, no, no, that, that's okay. Like, that's how visionary I am. I, I knew this was going to be big. So uh, then the, like the third month, then you said, oh, we have, I don't know how many, like 10,000, 20,000 downloads. And that's when I, my eyes just went wide open. I said, let's have a coffee. So, so we started having coffees. And full disclosure, um, I've been an advisor for two years, and now I actually work at the company, and really proud of it. And uh, not proud that I didn't catch on so fast, but, uh, but, but proud uh, to, to be part of Tapsy. But um, now we can talk about Tapsy. So you, you created the app, and, uh, that, but that wasn't your, you created, you didn't just create one company or one product. You had, you had a, another product. Yeah, we were working actually with, with my partner in a, in a different company, uh, which was another marketplace for uh, products, for um, quoting uh, products and services. And uh, when that product was launched, um, I didn't have uh, or I didn't enjoy as much being involved in, in, in the marketing stuff and the uh, uh, commercial stuff of, of selling the product. So we had this other idea in, uh, on the mind, in the back of the mind that, that we, we really wanted to, to develop. So I started coding it. I didn't know anything about uh, Objective-C, which is the language uh, that, that we chose to, to develop for, for iPhone. Um, so I took some classes online, saw a couple of videos, and since I, was, I had some good basis, good uh, um, fundament, fu foundations on, on development, I kind of got a, a good uh, grasp of, of the language really quick. And uh, I coded the first version um, for iOS and the backend and the driver app all together like uh, in about two months. And that's when we started launching the, uh, or doing the test with, with, with actual customers. And you said we, who, so you? Yeah, Andres Gutierrez, who, who is my, my partner. And um, he was after that focusing more, or he's actually in charge more of, of the commercial and the marketing uh, area of the, of the business. All right, so there's a lot of founders who look for co-founders. How did you guys you know, connect and, and know that you, you guys wanted to do something together? Yeah, it was, it was uh, actually very, uh, uh, very serendipitous. Yeah, that's uh, good, that's yeah, that's yeah. Well, me, right. uh, Because my partner just uh, arrived from, from the States. He was working for another big company in the States. And uh, he was looking for uh, build or finding ideas or or um, trying to do startups with, with, with someone who, who had some experience. Uh, so um, his uh, cousin, who happens to be a friend of, of my wife, uh, introduced us to, to, to me to, to talk about, about the different plans. And that first meeting that, that I remember we had it in, in Juan Valdez, uh, we kind of uh, found out that, that we had a lot of um, ideas in mind that, that were very similar or that had uh, similar plans. And at the same time, um, the, the things in which I felt um, I, I had lack, I had, I was, um, I had lack of, uh, of uh, experience or, or, or likeness. He, he had it, so we kind of had a, a really good match in terms of how we complement each other. And do you think that's key for? Yeah, for definitely. We, if, if, if you are looking for a partner, don't look for a partner that, that does the same thing that you do. You have really, you, you really have to, to, to look for someone that complements you in terms of, uh, of uh, the things in which you are, in which you are not strong. You, you have to look for that, those strengths in someone else. Okay, and um, like going deeper into this point, so what kind of traits or values do you think are key for the founding team? Uh, well, I think uh, the, the first one or the, the basic one is, is persistence. You have to be uh, very persistent with, with, the, with what you want to do, uh, with the ideals that, that, that you have, and uh, be very uh, uh, focused on that, and uh, be uh, or do really hard work uh, to, to, to try to get to those goals that you set up for you. Anything else? Like, uh... um, I would say that um, being able to 
try uh, the, uh, the ideas that you have with someone else or try to, to be very open about uh, what you're trying to do because sometimes you have an idea of, of doing something and uh, some, sometimes you, you're blindsided that, that you think that that's the only solution but when you're open to, to, to hear from, from other people or to listen to your, your potential customers uh, that idea can change or can switch or you can pivot to, to one uh, uh, better solution for, for, what the pro for the problem that, that you're trying to solve. How key was it that one of you two, basically you, were able to code the product and you didn't have to, and you knew how to code? How key was that compared to a founding team that doesn't have somebody who knows how to code? Yeah, I think that for a software-based uh, uh, startup is, is key to, to have a, a, technical, a strong technical um, uh, person in the team or founder because it helps to quickly move the ideas into real uh, things or so trying trying to connect the uh, the the inspiring part of, of why I started coding is that um, when you have this idea and you are able and uh, so passionate about it that, that, that you're able to actually get the results quickly or, or start seeing it grow quickly um, it helps a lot to, to instead of I don't know hiring someone that is just going to work from eight to five or something like that. So probably having a, a, a good uh, tech uh, founder is, is is key. Okay, so when we sat down back then, you remember, the, you guys had two companies. Can you say which one you were most you, your expectation was that was going to do the best? Well, at the beginning, um, because it was more advanced, we, we thought that, that the first one, the previous one, not Topsy, uh, was going to, to, to get more results. It was more evolved. We were already talking uh, with, uh, with some possible partners. We already had some customers who were registering and, and using it. Um, but we, we were uh, very uh, um, confident that Topsy would be uh, also a good, uh, a good option, although we didn't focus too much on, on, on that goal or, or what we expected. We were just focusing on solving this, the, the problem. Okay, let's so, get deeper into that. So how did you come up with the solution? What did, you know, here, now, now everybody talks about customer development, stuff like that. What did you do, coding and also aside from coding? Yeah, at the beginning, at the beginning it was only, or, or the first iteration was only based on the initial thoughts that we had about uh, what we expected as customers of, of an app like this uh, would need. So um, we developed the first version of the driver app and the passenger app based on, 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 on our own perception of, of what the customer needed. Uh, but after a few tries and after I installed it to friends, to family, and they started using it, um, it was key also to, to hear their impression, to hear um, the problems that they were having or the things that they really liked, the wow factor that they, that they felt when, when, uh, when they used the, the app for the first time and they said, oh my God, this works, this really works. And um, how those different cues that you get from, from the people when you are building the, uh, the, the software um, uh, help you to improve the, the solution and to improve the, 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 um, the yeah, the, the, so the, the problem or the, the solution that, yeah, that you're, you're solving. And, and you, did you look at it from the, the user's perspective only or? Oh no, we had the chance after all, yeah, I forgot to, to mention that. Um, since part of our market uh, was, or actually a key part of, of our market was the drivers, uh, when we installed the, the application to, to smartphones or, or tablets and we gave it to, to uh, the drivers, um, since they were not very uh, tech savvy, we had to look very closely on how they used the software, on, uh, on how they interacted with the, with the app, and uh, without them uh, saying it to you, you had to really um, 
identify what, what what were the the pain points that we were having using the app and what would really make their lives much easier when you when you develop the software so we iterated a lot uh, working with uh, with drivers from from one, some tablets and, and phones that we bought for for the for the drivers and getting a lot of feedback from them and looking at them when they were uh, using the app didn't you drive a taxi for a day or something? i drove a taxi for for a day too and uh, it was it was also a, a very um enriching experience because i had the opportunity to uh, um, see or feel the pain points or, or, or the uh, problems that the driver had when they were on the, on the street uh, using the app, but also I had the chance to interact with the, with the passengers when they hopped on. I didn't say I, I worked for Tabsy or anything at that moment. Um, uh, it, was, it was something that it was really new. So I had the chance to, to start talking about them. So uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, I was able to talk to them about the app and how also they used it or how they perceived the service uh, through, the, um, through, the, through the drive. Um, and that also gave us a lot of, of feedback that we could use to improve the app or to improve the, the whole experience. And um, somebody was asking in the audience, uh, so did you start out with a code base that was already there, like an app that was already existing and you just built on top of it, or did you do it all from scratch? No, we, we started it from scratch. Okay. And uh, somebody else was asking, uh, what unconventional tactics did you use to, to get taxi drivers to get them to get onto the platform? Unconventional tactics. Well, we, we, um, we asked our drivers to, to refer other friends. It's not so unconventional. But since it was something that the drivers valued so much because after they saw that it was working for them and that they could use it and find more, more rides for, for, for them um, without um, investing a lot of money. Uh, in Colombia, uh, many drivers feel that uh, the old companies uh, were abusing them a lot. So for them, uh, seeing something new that really worked for them and uh, from uh, a couple of young kids that, that didn't, uh, didn't uh, care a lot about these uh, huge companies, um, we felt that um, um, giving these people uh, this solution without uh, any ties was very helpful for them and they started promoting us uh, among the, um, the, uh, the other drivers or, or, or the community. Okay, so Tapsy now has like 85 people, it's grown a ton in two years, right? And that's when it started to grow a lot. But give us a sense, like those first months, like uh, what was happening those first months? Like? Yeah, the first months uh, in 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 our in our case, they were really hectic. It was a lot of of of, mo of movement, uh, a lot of growth uh, problems with the platform when 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 uh, we had so many users connected at the same time, and uh, and sometimes the, the the platform started to 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 lag or to to slow down. Uh, so uh, it was very exciting also, but it, it happens so fast that you, you sometimes you don't notice. Um, but basically, the, uh, the, the fact that there were so many things happening at the same time, good things, the bad things, and how you solve the bad things, and how you try hard to, 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 to solve the, the issues, or how you, you think you can improve your software or your application to, to, to work better. Um, it was it was it was really uh, how do you say that like uh, a very fast moving experience in hectic. which yeah hectic in mm -hmm. which in which there were so many things happening at the same time. So you you, you said a few things that you did like you know you you iterated the product product everything in terms of it growing so fast. What what was happening in the market that you think helped Tapsy grow so fast also? 
Uh, well, in the in the market, I think um, there was a, a lot of dissatisfaction from from the people uh, regarding the previous system in, in which they called a, a number and they had to stay for five ten minutes waiting for for the confirmation, and uh, we noticing that um, the. Um, the previous system was very inefficient. Uh, we really were happy to, to get feedback from, from drivers and from passengers, and especially drivers, because we, we talked a, a, a lot with them, in which they felt that uh, they were getting a lot more income um, and they were spending less money, and they didn't know why they were spending uh, less money, but basically it was because the um, the uh, the system, because of the GPS and and the optimization of the rides, uh, was so was so much better than the previous system that um, uh, they were starting to save money in terms of gas, in terms of uh, maintenance of the of the of the car. So um, when we f when we received that feedback from from drivers and customers. Um, yeah, it was it was something that, that really really helped us to, to keep moving on and to keep uh, working hard. Okay, so there was a real pain point on the user end and a real pain point on the on the driver end. Yeah, that's probably some key part that happened, especially on, on our on our startup, that uh, helped us a lot to to grow because uh, the passengers who were not happy with the with, with the previous system and, and saw a solution. Uh, really, really quick and really easy with us. Started talking to to their friends, and also did the drivers because it helped them to to get more income for their for the from the work. How did you make it so that at the beginning, when hardly any any users were using it, they would get a good experience and they would actually get a cab when you just started out? Because that's always tough in a marketplace. Yeah, uh, we started hiring some, uh, or not hiring. We we re uh, recruited some uh, drivers, in which we, uh, we from from our savings, uh, bought some uh, uh, phones and uh, installed the software. And we bought some SIM cards. At that moment, uh, it was very popular that you could buy a SIM card at the uh, at the at the supermarket. So we bought ten or twenty of those, and we started to install the the uh, the software to to the drivers. Um, so that part was like uh, very um, manual. Yeah, we had to, to do a lot of things uh, ourselves on and uh, how we try to to solve issues that, that maybe right now is, is not that bad because now many people have smartphones. At that moment, uh, the drivers, most of the drivers didn't even know what the internet was. Uh, obviously, they didn't have smartphones. Uh, and we had to do a lot of those stuff for them so, so, so they, can have, they, they could have the, uh, the, the application working and, uh, and be able to, to pick up the people when, when but, they But But even if you, have, if you did that and you had like 100 drivers, 50 drivers, whatever, it's still not enough if you have thousands and thousands and then you had 100,000, 300,000. You, you, you've had, what, 1.6 million users who have downloaded it. But at the beginning, let's say there were 200,000, having 50 or 100 cab drivers doesn't, doesn't really make a dent in a marketplace. How did you make it so that they would have a good experience, the users would have a good experience? They would get a cab when you didn't have so many drivers signed up. Well, yeah. Uh, well, at the beginning, very beginning, yeah. we when when we started trying uh, and we didn't have enough cabs, we had to call uh, the the cab companies ourselves. So um, maybe we had five uh, phones, which w was the the first uh, that we could buy at the beginning, uh, and we had so five people on the street or five drivers on the street uh, maximum because some of them worked in the morning and other ones uh, uh, in the afternoon. So uh, when we didn't, uh, when we couldn't uh, find a cab for a passenger, we would call the the old taxi companies ourselves and and request the cab uh, manually. So we had to do a lot of, of that at the beginning. There's like a kind of an unconventional thing. Oh, okay. And I think that was key. So the user would get a good experience, then they tell, say, hey, this works. 
go go use it. And yeah, and we had we had the, we had many times uh, passengers or people saying, "Hey, this really works, or it works so well that we got three cabs." And that's because Andres and myself were calling different different uh, companies at the same time. So we got the confirmation from from uh, one company, the confirmation from another company, and eventually sometimes we got the confirmation from from uh, the five or twenty cabs that we have on the street. Okay, so now we've got a. Uh You've got, like I said, 85 people, it's grown, and now you also have competitors. So uh, you got the regional competitors and uh, the big one, Uber, that everybody mentioned. So somebody was saying, uh, how do you compete with these guys, and especially UberX? How, how do you compete with UberX? Yeah, I think uh, probably the, the, the key point or, or what uh, really uh, made us differentiate from, from other companies is that uh, we really, um, uh, put a lot of attention on the local needs. So, for example, in Colombia, uh, it was it, it was very popular in which when you uh, when you took a cab, you would call your mom or your mom or your girlfriend and say, "Hey, I'm 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 driving I'm, I'm on a cab home going home, and the license plates of the cab I'm in are these just for the security uh, sake." So, from the beginning when we developed the application. We allow the, the the person to share that information via email, via SMS, uh, on and also on social networks, um, the information from the cab that uh, that the passenger took. So, so we kind of um, localized a lot the solution. We we put a lot of attention on 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 what uh, the um, the uh, the customs or the, the or how people behaved uh, or how they uh, used the service before and uh, we try to adapt it uh, adapt our software as best as possible to solve that solution with those extra uh, perks that people were, were used to okay um, so there's another thing that you did at the beginning which was, which took a lot of sacrifice on your and Andres's part is that you didn't charge for a long time. What was the, the reason for that and how hard was it to not charge for a while? Yeah, uh, at the beginning, um, we were really focused on, on uh, growing the, uh, the, the business, on, on getting uh, more people using it, more uh, drivers installing the app and working with us. So we didn't want to, to put a toll on, on that growth. Um, so we took the decision to don't charge for, for almost a year. Uh, we were lucky that uh, we um, earned um, uh, how do you call that a, a, grant? a, a grant or yeah, yeah from a, from a, um, a, government a competition yeah a competition that we had from, from a government a agency in which we had uh, uh, some money coming in at, at the moment that, that we needed the most. So we were able to, to keep growing without uh, charging and uh, without worrying too much about money for almost a year. Okay. So, um, okay, so you're, you're in the present. Let's say uh, you can go back to the past and you can give advice to Juan two years younger when he's starting Tapsi. What advice would you give Juan? I guess I, um, I would pay a lot more of attention to legal issues. Um, I'm, I'm a guy that, that openly says that I hate lawyers because there's sometimes lawyers, there's lawyers here. I, I'm sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> I, and, and I know that they that they that they do good, but sometimes it's just probably because I don't uh, understand very well uh, the uh, the the law needs of the, of the company. So I would I would pay a lot more attention to to uh, to the. Uh, legal aspects of, of building uh, a company. That's probably the, the, the main one. And um, maybe don't worry too much about uh, uh, competition. Uh, just uh, focus on what you really do best and uh, on the problem that you are trying to solve. Pay a lot of attention to, to customers, listen a lot to them, and uh, learn, from, learn from them, like work work closer to, to them. I would, I would probably uh, ex spend more time uh, working with, uh, with customers. And, and going back to the legal thing, how about IP in specific, specifically? Yeah, in, that's, in that's intellectual probably, property. Yeah, that's probably part of the, key, uh, of the key issues in which I would pay a lot of attention. 
IP is key because it's the basis of, of, of your company and IP is what investors would uh, look deeper uh, because that's what makes your company unique and what could defend your company from, from uh, potential uh, copycats, lawsuits, etc. Okay. So th this is, these are five questions I'm going to ask everybody I interview. So I'm going I'm to ask them to you. So what do you think are the advantages of being a startup founder in an emerging market like Colombia um, or Latin America? Yeah, well, I think probably one is that uh, there is a lot to do, like uh, emerging markets are emerging or are, are starting to, to grow and to, to get um, input or, or cues from, from other uh, more industrialized, industrialized uh, com uh, countries. So there's a lot of opportunity to, to do things here that maybe in, in other uh, markets are, are more evolved. So that's, that's probably one, one key benefit of... of the so they tend to be like slower, more complacent. There's a, you know, the, the established companies. They're like well, yeah, complacent this, or uh, they're yeah, ready to be disrupted. In exactly, way. maybe also that because uh, there is not much um, interest in, in innovation, maybe from the old companies. So there's also uh, a lot of opportunity here to to get or to reach that dis that disruption that, that you could do with a with a good idea. And we're talking about multi-million dollar com uh, markets that are ready to be disrupted. Okay, now what are the disadvantages of being in an emerging market like? Uh, probably one key which we have had uh, some problems is finding uh, talent. Um, but it's starting to change because because uh, uh, people are start, uh, are also looking into into startups uh, as uh, an interesting um, way to grow professionally uh, and to learn to learn from from uh, from people who are working or or, or helping that company uh, or that startup grow at the same time that they are learning. So. Probably that's that's um, that's key. Um, something that, that that most people or some people could could say is is uh, is um, um, being able to uh, have access to technology. But now that the internet is so open, you you could use technology or new technology that is coming out uh, from Europe or from the States or from anywhere, uh, and be able to apply it or to use it in your startup very very easily. How about funding? Yeah, funding too. Uh, I think um, uh, funding is is a key issue when when you have a, a good idea that requires a lot of resources. Um, but I see that it started to, to change uh, in Latin America, Startup Chile, Impulsa. There are so many uh, new things or new. Uh, programs that uh, see a lot of potential in, in entrepreneurship and in, in supporting uh, people with ideas or people that, that have that drive to, to do new things and that could also help the economy to, to, uh, uh, by uh, growing jobs and doing different things or, or uh, improving the things that, that already exist, just, just do them better. Okay. And, um so the, the startup ecosystem here in Colombia has evolved in the last three years. Uh, what do you see in the next three years? Like three years from now, what do you think it's going to be like here? Is it going to be kind of the same? That what's what's going to happen here in, in Colombia? Yeah, I think um, I think based on, on like on, on all this ecosystem that is uh, happening in in Colombia or in these uh, uh, Latin American markets, in which. Um, uh, there is a lot more support than, than it was before from the government, uh, that the, the ecosystem is also growing, that, that uh, uh, meetings like this or, or, or um, um, uh, VCs looking at the, at, at, the, at the new companies and seeing the potential of these markets. As, as long as that's, that keeps happening, uh, which already is, um, I think uh, there's, a, there's going to be a lot more opportunities for entrepreneurs to, to reach their goals more easily than it was before. Okay. What advice would you give 
would be entrepreneurs, and but especially in, in emerging markets like like Colombia and here, there's there's some would be there's some entrepreneurs who are creating new companies, and in the context of the opportunities that are open to them, like in the next three years. Yeah, I think uh, probably the, the key is to 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 be persistent, to 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 really keep believing yourself, uh, keep keep doing what what you think is best, um, but uh, look at. The opportunities and and try to, to see what's out there that is not working well uh, because there are a lot of things uh, that don't work well in, in our cities uh, with all our problems that are our social issues um, that definitely we see a lot of, of, of uh, opportunities and potential for for new entrepreneurs or for people who uh, uh, maybe um, they are idealists and uh, and they want to solve problems in society. Okay, I know those were like kind of closing questions, but I forgot to ask something that somebody in the audience asked, which is, um, so in Topsy, how do you decide like what new market you're going to enter? And this is in the context of you've got global competitors like Uber, you've got regional competitors that have millions of dollars of investment. How do you decide what's the next city that your that Topsy is going to enter? Yeah, we do a lot of, of research on uh, on the, the local markets, on the, um, specifically for for Tapsi. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we take a look at uh, how big is a market in terms of, of uh, cab drivers, of uh, uh, monthly rides, uh, value of the rides, uh, the size of the population, or, or how big the city is, and uh, we kind of have some variables in which we try to 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 find out which um, is the most attractive for the solution that we're trying to, to bring to that market. Okay, and last question. So how has the ride been creating a, an organization, a company? Like not the product part, but the people part, getting them together. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a huge challenge. Uh, and it's probably one of the challenges that, that we have had uh, in 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 tabs is that that is is uh, is quite big, and is is in terms of um, how fast you grow and how fast you can uh, respond to that need of growth. So um, some people call it growing pains, and uh, I think it's it's something that we have felt and maybe uh, a lot of startups have, uh, and uh, is uh, having a lot of. Uh, um, users using uh, our app and uh, um, those users uh, maybe you're solving the first basic need but maybe they have another need and how do you solve the the, the whole the whole um, uh, yeah i don't want to repeat the need but the, the whole um, pain that, that that people are are having so uh, being able to um, see what is the most important uh, uh, need that you need to solve when you're growing and uh, trying to put that effort uh, in those specific uh, uh, priorities. All right, great. So uh, let's, thanks, thanks a lot. Everybody, let's give a, a round of applause.